So by the time that you watch this video, I would have already launched my second channel, which is more so of a vlogging channel, and I wanted a dedicated camera for exactly that, because it would just make it a lot easier to travel with rather than taking the camera that I use pretty much for everything. It would just be nice to have a dedicated one just for that. So with that said, I've been eyeing the RX100 Mark 7 for quite some time now, but I simply couldn't swallow that price tag for a point and shoot. Then I found a used one for about $980 on B&H's site, and I've spent quite a bit of time with this camera. So with that said, introducing the Sony RX100 Mark 7, this is why everyone still loves it in 2021. So let's go ahead and dive right on. And before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that we have a Twitch channel where we stream every Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. and to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So why not go ahead and drop a follow? And also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And also, make sure to check out the merch store. There's plenty of black and white sweetness to choose from up there. So go ahead and check that out. And then make sure to take a look at the podcast as well, as a podcast always goes live every Wednesday and Sunday. And with that said, enough rambling. Let us get straight into the video. And so the exterior design of this camera is going to consist of metal. This camera is very hefty and does feel very premium in spite of its size. This is a really small camera though, but it packs a lot of power onto it and it is a pretty unique camera in, in and of itself. However, because of the smooth exterior, it does make it harder to hold. Even when this little grip around the back of the camera is around, it, it's really just not enough to have a very comfortable and secure grip on this camera, which is why I ended up investing on, on this little grip cage for it, which has actually been a lifesaver, and that's the reason why I can hold it right now. Now, this camera will easily fit just about anywhere, and this camera does resemble cameras as old as even the RX100 Mark III, which is a about five years old and and it is the one that you're going to be seeing in the b-roll here you also get that flip out screen that we all know and love now on top you're going to find a viewfinder you will find a flash a switch for flipping open the flash a power button a zoom toggle along with a shutter button and a knob for switching between the different shooting modes on the back there's the flip out touch display of course a little grip a, a record button a function button a menu button a ring that is fully customizable and an okay button a playback button and a trash button to well delete anything on the right to that you're going to find the microphone jack the micro usb port and the micro hdmi port in case you wanted to stream with a camera like this i'm going to get into just a little bit more detail about that later but you can indeed do that this is a great camera for just that then on the left there's just a switch for the viewfinder on the bottom there is a mounting system and a latch that houses the battery and an sd card slot now this camera features a built-in 24mm to 200mm lens on a 1 inch sensor, which means that this is a crop sensor. This camera at its widest does feel pretty wide, I suppose, when filming from a normal distance of your subject, but it does feel pretty cropped and pointing the camera back at yourself. However, the zoom is quite powerful and very noticeable. I'm not one to usually take advantage of a zoom like this, but this is actually pretty impressive to say the least considering how far out it can actually go i never really i never really realized how cool it would be to have a zoom like this now for macro shots like this this camera does struggle to focus a bit more and it is quite noticeable at least on my unit but i do like this lens and the way that it operates very well and now regarding this display, we've got a pretty great display here. It is quite nice and it is touch enabled, but Sony has a horrible habit of giving you limited touch functionality. So you can pretty much only use the camera touch screen to touch to focus, which is always a missed opportunity. And it puzzles me why Sony does this. However, it is a display that is very capable and gets very bright. I do prefer the display on my Sony a6400, of course, but, but this is one that is more than just serviceable, I would say. Now we'll talk about the actual video quality this camera can record at up to 4k 30 frames per second but i prefer to record at 4k 24 so all of the footage that you're going to be seeing here will be at exactly that resolution and that frame rate i did some test recordings outdoors and indoors and this camera delivered on incredibly sharp footage everything looked very clear and while this isn't a cinema camera it delivers on very cinematic looking footage if you make it work for you of course and that genuinely surprised me just how powerful this camera is I would want to do color correction work on it though because sometimes the colors can feel a little bit dull for my liking and especially in the neutral setting per se I believe that that setting is more so there so that you could do more color correction work 
but yeah you do have that option and you can actually take pictures in the raw format if you really wanted to which is really good for photographers but all this is going to be okay by me there are still more color profiles to experiment with so there are still more to look at also do take a look at that dynamic range it's quite nice considering that the sky itself looks very sharp now if you are using this for vlogging i've definitely found myself feeling a little bit cramped by the crop sensor here as i have short arms so i can only extend them so far hence i do get this extra cropped image that most people may not experience but the quality is still really good and the cropping isn't really all so bad since the image does look really good do also consider that this camera has a recording limit of about 30 minutes and it does actually start getting pretty hot as you're recording even if it's just in short boost and the stabilization isn't very good at 4k but does improve greatly into 1080p however it is technically still there also consider that you do get a microphone jack with this camera with the camera that is this small which is not common at all so you do get a lot of features with this little monster right here which is why i simply had to go for it though it would be nice if there was a way to actually mount a set of microphone so instead i ended up getting this little grip over here that i showed you earlier that does have a cold stream mount on the side that you can use to mount a microphone or anything like that and if you are a streamer on the other hand you do get that mini or micro hdmi port on the side which you can just go ahead and connect this camera through that port to a capture card that goes into your computer then to a dummy battery so that this camera doesn't turn off or run out of power and this will make for a fantastic streaming camera because of the fantastic video quality now i don't have a setup guide for this but it is still going to be pretty simple to do it very much is just plug and play and then you kind of just adjust the colors from there so don't worry too much about that this will be an amazing streaming camera if you were looking to spend this much for a streaming camera so essentially yeah you'll be able to use this as a webcam if you really really want to and now even if you are into photography you've got a great camera here this isn't my preference for photography but, but this is the point and shoot camera to get for this particular purpose if any it is very good and the images that you will get are very sharp i'm not very good at, at taking pictures or photography by any means but i figured that i would still talk about it a little bit but you won't get a lot of depth of field for instance from these images so again it's not quite my preference per se i still use this camera for thumbnail photos since it's certainly a great camera for doing just that but this was mostly a video test for me however i figured that i would at the very least mention that this is still a good camera for still and now let's go ahead and talk about the battery life you should expect about 40 minutes of straight up recording with taking breaks between clips and all battery life just like in most cameras won't be super impressive but it is just fine for a point and shoot camera just like this i don't really have any issues with the battery life to be completely frank I always carry extras with me anyway, so again, not really a big deal. Now let's get into my complaints, because I do have a few. Sony should really bring more touch controls over to their cameras. The touchscreen is already there, just let us use it some more. This camera does get pretty hot also when recording for even just a few minutes at a time, even during the colder months in New York City, which can be concerning and does have me concerned for, uh, for the disgusting hotter months of New York City that will inevitably come starting sometime in June, I'm sure. But with that said, do keep that into strong consideration. Hopefully this camera will survive. And now on its own, this camera doesn't have a lot of grip, so it is pretty slippery, which is part of the reason why I got this grip kit. Again, if this is like the third time that I talk about it. I apologize about that. But also there's my personal issue with the micro USB port instead of USB-C. This camera released in 2019. There's no excuse, especially for a camera this expensive to have micro USB. Pretty unacceptable to me. So in conclusion, this camera is pretty incredible. I really do like what Sony has done here, as this is a great camera for film, photography, vlogging, and live streaming if you want to use this camera for streaming. Now, all of this in such a tiny package. This will be a fantastic travel camera for now and in the future. I have no doubt about that. This will be my main camera for my second channel and it would make for a fantastic B-cam for Tech Summit if needed as well. However, this camera is really expensive and I bought it because I had very specific needs that pretty much this camera was the only one that could meet. I needed one that I could pretty much just stuff in my pocket if I needed to, even with this grip over here and one that supported a lot of different features, especially something like a built-in microphone jack, which is something that I really value. But if I were buying a camera to use on a regular basis, 
I would have paid a little more to get the A6600 instead, as it would have fulfilled all of the issues that I had with this one. However, the form factor is what made me go with this approach. And if you buy this camera, you really won't be disappointed. Highly recommended on my front. And now, if you're interested in purchasing this camera, then I'll be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon in the description. I'm going to be leaving links to Luster as well, because Luster is going to be a really great alternative for helping you, for helping you find sales on items like this and things of the like and it's also going to help you in showing you different cameras that people tend to flock to instead it'll just show you like a hierarchy of things so i very much encourage you to get that because it's just a really fun and useful shopping tool that i like to use a lot in fact it does help me out quite a bit link to that down below and also there's going to be a bunda something like this you might want to finance i'm financing this right now in fact so if you are to use a bunda to finance your purchase to finance this camera then it is going to be very simple and flexible financing and you're not going to need a credit card at all it's going to be super helpful especially for something like this links to that down below use any of my links you'll be helping out the channel quite a bit so thank you so much and also do make sure to subscribe for the tech summit podcast that does go live twice a week i also stream on twitch every week twice a week starting at 8 p.m and ending at 10 p.m eastern time every every friday and saturday so do make sure to stop by for that also we do have a discord i'd love to have you join over there links links to that are going to be down below as well as links to the rest of my social media but with that said this has been francisco from tech summit thank you so much for watching and i will be seeing you all later enjoy